So my overall general philosophy in sales has always been do what nobody else wants to do. And what I mean by that is approach the people that you feel are unapproachable in sales because that's normally the people, in my opinion, that are gonna give you the best, most quality sale there is to make. So like when I was at LA Fitness and I was a personal training director, um, the people that were coming in and price shopping, what I mean by that is they would come in and they would specifically inquire about the service that I was trying to sell. So in this case, it was personal training. And so whenever they came in and asked, hey, do you guys have personal trainers available? I already knew that was gonna be more than likely a tougher sale because they have a price point in their mind that they may not be willing to break or negotiate with. And most of the time, they're not willing to hear value because they have a price point that's dead set and cemented into their brain. And they're not an open canvas for building value. So my philosophy is a little bit different in that way when it comes to approaching things. Also, when it comes to recruiting, any type of sales, like right now I own a roofing and construction company, right? So you would think that the people that would be best in the roles that they're currently in are the people that have been there and done that in those roles. So there's a lot of CEOs and a lot of executives out there that specifically only recruit talent that has done that type of skill set before. Right. Well, if you have X amount of years in you know, recruiting, for example, or let's say if you have uh, 20 years of experience being a COO or if you have 15 years of experience in sales, well, yeah, experience does add up and it does add value to that person's position and their ability to add value to the organization. But in my opinion, it's always best to hire character over skill set. So it doesn't always mean that the best person is in the, in, is in the best position. Just because they've done it before doesn't mean that that's the person that you're looking for within your organization. It may not be the best person for that role. So what I've always done is I like to go after, you know, specific characteristics with hiring somebody. So, you know, I ask them how many hours a week do they like to work? I like to ask them, what would you do in this specific situation to help describe what their character is? I would ask them, hey, how do you handle conflict resolution? How do you manage stress? Uh, what's your emotional intelligence look like and what does that mean to you? What has been your best boss uh, with all the places that you've worked? And give me an example of why they were your best boss and also give me an example of your worst boss and maybe why they were your worst boss. You know, all in all, in summary, I think what I'm trying to say is that the best fit or the best person or the best sale may not be glaring in front of you saying I'm the best person and I'm the best sale. You may have to dig a little bit and play Moneyball. I've seen that movie with Brad Pitt. I think you have to maybe look for different things, especially in this highly competitive environment and in the highly competitive world that we live in. Uh, you can't look for traditional you know, signs or red flags that you should go to or stay away from. I think you have to dig a little deeper and create your own specifically designed algorithm on finding the people that you want, right? Because just because somebody was a great recruiter at another organization does not mean that they're gonna be a great recruiter at your organization. You may have a completely different set of core values, a completely different mission statement, obviously a completely different leadership team, and they may not mesh with that leadership team. So that's always important to remember.